Today we're going to make the perfect hot dog and hamburger chili. It's smooth and spreadable just like the stuff you can get in a can, except it's actually made out of beef and tastes amazing. The freaky thing about almost every single can of hot dog chili I looked at is that they didn't even have beef in them. A lot of them had beef fat but were actually made out of textured vegetable protein. Which is just wrong. But don't worry, not only are we going to be using real beef, but we're going to be using some of the highest quality grass finished beef from my favorite company, ButcherBox. Not a paid promotion or anything, I'm just a big fan. But if you'd like to check it out and support the channel, I'll put a link down in the description that'll give you $30 off your first order plus free bacon for life. I mean, who doesn't want free bacon? It's a subscription service where you select what cuts of meat you want and they'll ship it out to you every month in one of these nifty little insulated boxes. And not only is their meat organic and hormone free, but their beef is grass finished. Which is important because when beef is labeled grass fed, that just means it ate some grass during its life and was probably finished on grain at some point. Whereas grass finished means the cow ate nothing but grass and foliage its entire life. And not only does grass finished taste better, but it's better for you, as studies have shown grass finished beef contains up to five times as much omega-3 fatty acids as grain finished beef. So check out that link in the description, you know I wouldn't steer you wrong. On to making the perfect hot dog chili, we want one pound of 80-20 ground beef. This was 85-15, but that's fine. We're going to keep this chili recipe super simple with two teaspoons of chili powder and about a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes along with a teaspoon of salt and two ounces of tomato paste. That's about half of one of the small cans. And that's it for seasoning. I decided not to add any garlic or tomato because I really wanted those primary flavors of the beef, peppers, and tomatoes to shine through in our hot dog chili. Now here's the secret to getting that fine spreadable texture. We want to cover this in water. And I know it might seem a little strange at first, but a potato masher is my favorite tool to get this all broken up. A soup ladle would be my second choice, anything we can use to press and get everything separated. We're basically breaking the ground beef down into the original size of the grind. We don't want the beef to clump together. We can do this at the same time we're bringing it up to temperature, and once it's nice and even like this, we can go ahead and switch to a regular wooden spoon. As this finishes coming up to temperature, it's going to go from a reddish color to more of a brown color. Once it looks like this, everything's cooked and we don't have to worry about it sticking together anymore. So we can just let that come up to a simmer and we're going to partially cover this. And just let it cook on low for 30 minutes to an hour until most of the water has evaporated. Here's what mine looked like after 20 minutes. It's reduced down a lot, but there's still a lot of liquid in there. Just keep going. Once it's finished, it should look something like this. The key is we want to be able to scrape the bottom with a spoon and not have liquid rush in to fill that space right away. That's how you know it's perfect. The seasoning should be fine if we measured everything, but I'm going to give it a quick taste anyway, just to be sure. And that's it. Our hot dog and hamburger chili is ready to serve. And this stuff stores great in the fridge up to a week or in the freezer indefinitely. If you're a fan of chili cheese dogs or burgers, you really need to give this a try. You will not go back to the store-bought stuff, I guarantee it. My perfect chili burger is a little bit of mayo on the bottom, cheesy patty chili on top, and then we're going to load that up with finely diced onions and finally one single piece of lettuce, because that magically transforms it into a salad, or at least that's what I'm told. I really hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Passion for Food. If you have, give me a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss our future recipes. And check out one of our other great videos on the screen now. This has been Graham with a passion for food.